modes of excretion. Now, the, the excess of nitrogen present in our body, and nitrogen is a vital element to our body. We take nitrogen in the form of amino acids. We take nitrogen in the form of amino acids. Amino acids we, we take from plant sources or animal sources. So these amino acids, they, after uh, we take it in the form of proteins, after digestion, the amino acids, they go back into the tissues. And then again, amino acids combine together to form proteins. The extra nitrogen present in amino acid, see nitrogen is so crucial. Amino acid This is a simple amino acid. One side it has got NH2 group, other side it has got COH group. One side there is amino group, other side there is COH group. So when, when I take extra proteins, extra nitrogen means extra proteins or extra amino acids, this amino group this amino group is removed. It is removed. And that process of removal of amino group is called deamination. So it is removed. It is combining with hydrogen. It forms ammonia. So the extra proteins, extra nitrogen or extra amino acids, they are, they are converted into ammonia. In some animals, the nitrogen, the ammonia is converted into urea. In some animals, the ammonia is converted into uric acid. First converted into urea and later converted into uric acid. Now let us discuss about the modes of excretion. Now nitrogen, it is a vital element for our survival. Nitrogen, it is present as free nitrogen N2 outside molecular nitrogen in the atmosphere but we cannot directly utilize that nitrogen nitrogen in our body is present in the form of proteins now i derive proteins from a plant source or an animal source so i take proteins i digest i convert that into amino acids amino acids again go back to the tissues in tissues the amino acids are converted back into proteins it is useful for growth, repair of damaged tissue and some of the proteins become enzymes as well. Now that extra proteins, when I take extra proteins, that extra proteins, all proteins contains amino acids. Here I have drawn one amino acid. A protein is a chain of amino acids. So I took one amino acid here. One side it is amino group, other side it is carboxylic group. When I take extra nitrogen or extra amino acids, the amino group is removed. The removal of amino group is called deamination and it is added with one more hydrogen to form produce ammonia. So some animals, the extra nitrogen is converted into ammonia and in that form it is pushed outside. Free nitrogen form it is not pushed, pushed outside. The nitrogen should be combined with other, other elements to form compounds of nitrogen and normally formed compound is ammonia. Some animals they convert ammonia to urea. Some animals they convert ammonia to urea and later the urea is converted into uric acid. The urea, uric acid and ammonia all contain nitrogen. Pushing out of that nitrogen containing waste is called as excretion. Nitrogen containing waste are also formed when nitrogen bases are broken down. Nitrogen bases are present in nucleic acid, DNA. When nitrogen bases are broken down, even then you can see formation of nitrogen containing base. So pushing out of all these nitrogen bases from body is called as excretion. Based on mode of excretion, 
we have got three different types of organisms. Ammonotelism. When I say ammonotelism, some animals excrete ammonia. Excretion of ammonia by organisms is called ammonotelism. Now, ammonia is a combination of one nitrogen and three hydrogen atoms. So, it is the most simplest of all the three nitrogen base. I mean, when I compare ammonia, urea, uric acid, ammonia is the most simplest. It is seen as an excretory product in most of the invertebrates, for example, protozoans like amoeba, paramecium, like sponges, or porifera, like scypha, leucosolenia, like cylindrates, like hydra. In case of arthropods, one example, palimon, freshwater prawn, or in case of sea urchins in echinodermata, or bony fishes, bony fishes, where the excreted product is ammonia. You can see ammonia even in case of aquatic tadpole larva of frogs. So you can see in most of the invertebrates. In most of the invertebrates, excretory product is ammonia, but not all invertebrates like protozoa, protozoans like amoeba, paramecium, they excrete ammonia. Porifera. Porifera includes sponges. The sponges like scypha. Hmm? Scypha is crown sponge. So, cylindrate like hydra. Hmm? Cylindrates like hydra. And in case of arthropoda, palimon. Palimon is freshwater sponge. And in case of arthropoda, in case of echinodermata. Like Asterius, Sea Star, Bony Fishes, Larva of Frogs. See, most of the invertebrates, here I have given a list of invertebrates. Many of the invertebrates like amoeba, paramecium, some sponges like scypher, some cylindrates like hydra, and some freshwater, freshwater prawns like palimon and sea stars, excretory product is ammonia. See, this excretory product, ammonia, it readily diffuses in water. Through body wall, it directly diffuses. In that case, in most of the invertebrates, it directly diffuses through the body into water. Bony fishes, it will diffuse out through the gills in the form of ammonium ions. Larva of frogs, adult frogs excrete urea, but tadpole larva of frog excrete ammonia. Remember, ammonia is highly toxic. Ammonia is highly toxic. It is synthesized inside liver. Now this ammonia, if it circulates in blood, it goes to all parts of the body. A deamination occurs inside the liver. Now if it circulates throughout the, all the parts of the body, it's highly toxic and it damages brain and neurons. So it has to be pushed outside. In vertebrates, it's simply by diffusion, it's going outside. In bony fishes, it is through gills. It combines with one more H plus ions. Ammonia combines with H plus and forms ammonium ions and H4 plus ions. So it's readily diffusing outside into a water outside. 
Now, to excrete ammonia, to excrete 1 gram of ammonia, 300 to 500 grams of water is required. A lot of water is required. Very less energy is required. So that means for excretion of ammonia, since I told you highly toxic, it is highly toxic. Firstly, ammonia is highly toxic. So it has to be pushed outside. So to push out one gram of ammonia, the animal requires up to half a liter, half a liter, 300 to 500 ml of water is required. Considerable amount of water is lost. But see, most of these invertebrates or bony fishes, they are already present in water. So they can afford to lose lot of water. They can afford to lose water. So water is not a problem. And so they spend less energy in that process. But we also have ureotelic animals. Ureotelism. Excretion of urea. The excretive product formed in these animals. Uricotelic animals excrete urea. This is urea. NH2CO, NH2 is urea. Animals which excrete urea includes earthworms, chondrichthys, the cartilaginous fishes. Adult frogs. Amphibians. Adult amphibians. And mammals. Including human beings. Hmm? Ureotelism means the process of excretion of urea. Animals which excrete urea are called ureotelic animals. The formula of urea, urea is NH2CO NH2. Now, some invertebrates like earthworms, they excrete urea. Chondrichthys, cartilaginous fishes present in marine water. The cartilaginous fishes include the sharks, cates and rays, chimeras. These animals, they, they excrete urea. Of course, they also retain urea in blood. A urea is poisonous. But they are not, it is not as poisonous as in as ammonia. Now, this chondrichthys, it, it, it is called physiological uremia. See, in case of shark, um, the, the concentration in, in case of shark, the, the salt concentration outside is around 30, 33 ppt. So, it will try to elevate urea levels also so that it becomes isotonic to external concentration here and here both equal there is no movement of water in and out for example concentration outside is more there is more salt outside less salt inside what will leave if supposing there is more salt inside outside, outside less salt so what will come inside to prevent that it will elevate the levels of salt salt here so that which is that substance which acts like salt here is actually urea. So retention of urea in blood is called physiological uremia. Now this animal